Hey guys, welcome to another episode of my Bumble Gaming uh, series. Uh, the, if you've noticed uh, an uh, improvement in the quality of the audio, that's thanks to Matt, who's uh, one of my mates, who I uh, who was a guest on the previous uh, previous podcast that I recently uploaded to my channel. So if you haven't seen that already, check it out, please, um, if you want. And uh, I will be doing uh, well. I will be using this mic for the next few weeks, I think. So there's a good chance that you might be able to hear this better audio on some of my future, uh, incoming future videos as well. And for this video today, I've got like a slightly different idea. It's not really going to be uh, gaming related per se. I guess not like computer gaming, at least not console gaming. Um, back in 2011, I had an idea to sort of uh, to create my own uh, Mass Effect tabletop role-playing game, and. Just recently I had a look at those uh, old files, old notes that I had on this and thought it would be interesting to expand on them. And that's what I did. So I'll just quickly run you through what I've got for this. So here's the, I've got it in a PDF document, just like a little cover uh, page as well. And I don't expect this to kick off or anything and be become like a real game and obviously there's issues with copyright as well. So it's just for fun really, it's just another fan made RPG that there's probably loads of them already. Um, but I'll quickly, quickly run you through it. This is mostly based on the Dungeons and Dragons format, so fifth edition. So I'll re quickly uh, read the introduction for it as well. So uh, it is the year twenty-eight. Uh, there you go. It is the year twenty-one eighty-five. Common era. Remote human colonies in terminus systems are mysteriously disappearing. A strange new race of insectoid aliens known as the Collectors has emerged from beyond the Omega Four relay. Two years have passed since the Battle of the Citadel, when the rogue Spectre Saren Arterius and the Spectre uh, Reaper Sovereign were vanquished. Commander Shepard, along with some of the crew, has perished aboard the SSV Normandy SR-1 in an enigma enigmatic attack. Rumors say that the human supremacist organization known as Cerberus has increased its operations tenfold. The Milky Way galaxy is a chaotic place with plenty of opportunities for those who know where to look. Who will you be in this sci-fi adventure? So just that's just like a little introduction to hook the uh, reader in. Um, the reason why I just set this around the same time that Mass Effect 2 takes place is because that's uh, probably still my favorite one uh, from the original Mass Effect trilogy and also one of my favorite games. Uh, and I guess it's like the most interesting, maybe the most interesting time uh, in the Mass Effect universe because it's it's after the, obviously after the Battle of the, of the Citadel as I said earlier, but before the Reaper invasion uh, kicks in full force. Um, and also, uh, th that's why you won't see the Angara or the, the Remnant or the, the Ket or anything like that from the from Mass Effect Andromeda. In fact, I've started working Mass Effect Andromeda review, but the recent patch has actually um, broken my game to the point where I cannot continue. So I'm just waiting for another patch because I cannot, I haven't been able to fix that issue. So I am still working on that. I've got plenty of footage and some uh, script written already. So that. I don't know when that will be available, because well, I have to wait for another patch, but yeah. So, the f next thing that I've got for this uh, Mass Effect RPG is the just like a little description of each of the galax the galaxy of the galaxies, uh, the Milky Way galaxy's regions. So you've got obviously the, the Council Space, and the most regulated and most lawful regions. You've got the Terminus systems, the, like the Outlaws, the Attican Traverse, again like the Fringe, the, the Borderlands I guess. And then the other systems alliance space, so the the humans and the batarians and shit. Then I've got like a basic description of each of the factions in the game as well. So we've got the Citadel Council and all, obviously all the the main Citadel races, so the Asari Republics, the Turian Hierarchy, the Salarian Union, and the Systems Alliance, so the humans. Then I've got the Migrant Fleet, so the Quarians, uh, the Geth, the Batarian Hegemony, uh, the Volus Protectorate, or the Vol Protectorate, Cerberus, uh, and of obviously the um, the main criminal organizations in the game, so the Blue Suns, the Blue Pack, and the Eclipse. Um, next, I just did like a summary of all the main attributes and statistics that, again, mostly inspired by uh, Dungeons and Dragons. So we've got vitality, stamina, and energy. Those are like the f uh, first three key um, statistics that you'll, you'll, you'll use in the game. So the vitality is obviously your, your half points. I've put down that it gives bonuses to chemical resistance, but I haven't really, and, and modifies the time your character can breathe without oxygen, but I haven't really done anything with that yet, so yeah. Uh, then I've got stamina, which is uh, determines how long your character can, can sprint for. Gives bonuses to illness resistance. Again, I haven't done any resistance stuff yet, so 
uh, and got, as well as limiting maximum carry weight. Energy is basically like mana points in, in high fantasy RPGs. And this is only used by, just like mana, or is only used by wizards and mages and shit. This is only used by biotic characters. So it, it uses, you can use it up to uh, to use biotic attacks, support allies, and affect your surroundings. And I've got carry weight, uh, so how much your character can hold. I guess maybe this is maybe a bit too much because the the values in the brackets are like the default or like more or less the default for each of these categories. So yeah, this is how much they can hold and um, yeah, and. Th th they can, how much they can hold without affecting their movement speed and finally movement speed this is in meters so I think it'll be like 30 feet to 10 meters uh, how many tiles you can move uh, you can traverse in one during one combat encounter because obviously that it's there's no it's not important outside of combat because you can move as much as you like um, then I've got the attributes again based on D&D &D, but instead of six as you can see I've got only five and I've also gotten rid of uh, dexterity and wisdom because they're not really uh, I guess instead of I think I've got perception, which is I'm not sure if there is something like that in D and D, but I don't think so. And then instead of wisdom, why well, didn't really have anything in place of wisdom because it's not really uh, there's not much use for it in like a sci-fi setting. So I did I do have fitness because that's something that's from uh, Mass Effect, I think. Yeah, I think it was in one of the Mass Effect games. So so I've got fitness uh, again, average values of 10. So that's where you don't have any bonuses or penalties. It's just plus zero or nothing. Um, so fitness governs how physically fit your character is, it gives bonuses to vitality and stamina, but it can also be used during persuasion, so if you get a <laughs> fit bot, I guess you can uh, use that to persuade someone. Um, strength. Strength uh, doesn't really need an explanation, the basics, uh, basic skill, or well, not skill, attribute in pretty much every RPG. Gives bonuses to carry weight and intimidation. Intelligence, I think I was inspired by uh, Knights of the Old Republic, and this one, how I told her, uh, how it gives you an additional skill point for every five points spe spent each time at level up. I think maybe five points is a bit too much, but um, yeah, I guess I'll have to edit that. And obviously bonuses to technology and science. Perception is basically uh, uh, sort of the, the key uh, statistic for shooters, I guess, because uh, it, cause it uh, gives bonuses to precision and technology. So precision is, is sort of what, what, uh, what might give you bonuses to your uh, ranged attacks, so obviously since this is a sci-fi set in the Mass Effect universe, most of the attacks will be ranged. Uh, not as much as, uh, uh, much more than uh, in D&D &D where you've got swords and shit. Uh, so, and then obviously Charisma gives bonuses to Persuasion and Intimidation. Finally the skills, uh, well not finally, but finally in the, uh, the statistics section. We've got Persuasion, uh, Intimidation, Self-Explanatory Technology and Science, again. Uh, so technology, good using computers, hacking interfaces, fixing and modifying equipment, uh, science, yeah, yeah, uh, precision, character skill and precision are good aiming weaponry. Uh, you can higher tr get a ch higher chance to score critical shots. So it sort of gives you like a bonus, uh, bonus to your attacks and shit. Uh, stealing, uh, survival, martial arts, and stealth. Stealth and obviously stealth and stealing are sort of related ones. Uh, yeah. So moving on, I've did, uh, I've got like a list of the main playable, 11 playable races that you get to choose from when you create a character. And I've only stuck with uh, the sentient biped characters because, uh, like, I guess that's just to, to keep it simple, keep it, uh, I guess, more or less balanced as well. Uh, so, yeah, so only like more or less, this, they're more or less the same size or similar size as well. Uh, so for just for the context sake and like in universe info, I've got put their average life spans as well. The reason why you might be wondering like why the hell humans got 150 years, like there's you know, humans that live that long, but that's because it's for uh, Mass Effect universe info. So in Mass Effect today you can live 150 years, I think, right out somewhere. But yeah, excuse me. And most of the info you see here is actually from. Uh, Obviously, apart from the stuff that I made up myself and wrote myself, you can see stuff from the Mass Effect Wiki, the Mass Effect Codex, and other info from within the game itself, or within all three of the games. Uh, so, for each of the races, you also get attribute modifiers. So, the lot if you get, if you just have two, like, uh, or it could be plus two or plus one to one uh, attribute, plus one to another, you get no penalties. But if you have something more than that, you also get penalties to your uh, attributes. It also depends on your character's physique and uh, on your species, chosen species' physique and psychology. 
Then you've got disposition modifiers, so that's how well your uh, species gets along with other races. So the humans, for example, get plus five over sorry, minus five of Turians because of the first contact war and how recent that is, and minus twenty of Batarians because like unofficially or basically at war or something. Some races, well, most races get skill bonuses and skill penalties. Humans didn't get any because they're sort of the average Joes of the universe, I guess. Like they're the basics of how we what we base everything on. And then you've got the available classes, which I'll talk more about uh, later on. So the uh, humans got more, more or less all of the characters available to them. Um, I've also put preferred classes, preferred backgrounds, again more on that later, and preferred alignments. Alignments I basically just re uh, recycled D&D stuff again, because it's just perfect for this kind of stuff. So yeah, the, that's the humans for you. Then I've got the Asari, as you can see, different, uh, different statistics. The Batarians. The Batarians, for example, have like lawful evil preferred alignment because they come from like a dictatorship, like some like, really authoritarian, autocratic um, uh, regime of sort of society. Yeah. And uh, again, minus twenty of humans because of that. Uh, I think yeah, there you go. That's an example of an, in the, with the Asari. That's an example of a negative mo attribute modifier because they're known for charisma. They're known for being fit, and, but they're not. Uh, like the best uh, physical fighters straight on, but they obviously are uh, good biotics, so that's why their preferred class is an adept or vanguard. Um, so then we move on to the drill. As you can see, the drill have uh, a huge but disposition modifier of the Elcor, and uh, I was thinking of uh, adding the Elcor to uh, like as a playable race, but then I uh, thought that maybe not, because again, they don't really walk on two uh, two uh, legs and. The, the size difference is quite uh, quite notable in comparison to the other species. I mean, I, th I think they're even large, larger than the Krogan. Um, then we've got the Krogan. As you can see, Krogans get a lot of bonuses to strength and fitness, but they got uh, minuses to charisma and intelligence. And uh, yeah, the minus 20 with that's again quite a large uh, negative uh, disposition modifier with the Salarians because of the genophage. And the same thing with Turians, but much uh, smaller. Oh, there's a comma missing there, that's something to edit. Um, yeah, there we go. And also, this is something that you might have seen, noticed. Uh, they have a different, one more, one extra class to choose from, the Battlemaster. And that's because uh, the Krogan, obviously, since their since their physique, physique is quite unique, they are the biggest, baddest motherfuckers in the galaxy, really. So, uh, apart from the Reapers, obviously, uh, they got... Uh, their own class to choose from. No one else can choose this class, only the Krogan. Uh, I'll borrow that later. Uh, Salarians, there we go. Yeah, minus 20 of Krogans, Genophage. Uh, also, here you can see that uh, you might also get skill penalties to other things, like not necessarily skills, but like uh, attributes, or other attributes like carry weight, because of, the, cause of their uh, fragile and like slim build, uh, Salarians cannot carry as much. Uh, and obviously they're not as intimidating. We've got the Torians. <laughs> the Torians, you see, mostly, uh, usually mostly military backgrounds. Um, Quarians. Uh, as you can see, Quarians have a huge uh, negative disposition modifier with the Geth, because obviously got, they got chased away by the Geth from their own homeland. Uh, and again, really large bonus to technology, but also large penalty to stamina because of their shitty immune system and yeah and again I guess they're not the, the most uh, heavily built species either uh, the Volus that might be like an interesting choice I guess because um, they're not really uh, something you would consider a combat species but there are Volus fighters I mean they they uh, we've seen them in Mass Effect 3 multiplayer and some of the DLC uh, similarly like to the what it, to yeah, to the Salarians they have a skill penalty to the, uh, the carry weight. A smaller one, but they are, yeah. And they have a large disposition modifier with the Turians, because the Vault Protector is technically not even like a sovereign government. It's a, uh, it's dependent, like it's a, uh, yeah, it's dependent on the Turian hierarchy. The Vault Share again, maybe a, a interesting choice, because yeah, you, you don't really think of them as a playable character, a playable species. You can see their preferred line is chaotic evil because they're basically pretty much like animals. Uh, I've given them huge bonus to uh, 
fitness because uh, I'm not sure if you've uh, heard that uh, in, like, in the Mass Effect universe they have this uh, really interesting biology how they get tougher and uh, harder to kill every time they get hurt so they, if they get burned, if they get uh, stabbed or something they, their skin thickens and hardens after that the day if I think they can also regrow lost limbs so that's why their sort of species hasn't evolved for uh, for a really long amount of time and because they sort of evolved more on an individual uh, level and bonuses to intimidation and stealth but not so much on the persuasion and they're not very popular, they get minus 10 with all races except Gef and Krogons, the Gef because they don't really mind and <laughs> the bonus with Krogons because of blood pack alliance and shit uh, and finally the Geth, which is the only inorganic, uh, the only robotic race to choose from. So, uh, again, they are really unpopular with the Korans, but with all races really, because they're, yeah, the galaxy doesn't really like the Geth. And skill points as well. But they also, as you can see, they have the least classes to choose from because of their uh, robotic bodies because they are, since they are not organic they cannot be biotics you can only choose from soldier engineer and infiltrator but like the krogan they also have their own class that no one else can choose from uh, and also something that's uh, unique to the geth is that they have their own background that no one else can choose but the geth can also choose no other background due to their unique origins moving on probably one of the most important aspects is the playable classes so i've got the uh, these are Taken straight from the from the games, but I also uh, incorpor incorporated the the D and D system into this. So you've got the adept uh, with the hit dice one d eight. Uh, I've also put starting armor training, such weapons training for the for each class. So they start off with only light armor and uh, pistol, but obviously that's because the the main focus is biotic powers, not combat abilities like uh, weaponry and yeah. As you can see, their vitality and stamina is a bit lower than the average, maybe, but uh, that's because they also obviously have the biotic powers to balance that out. They have a, a, a full on energy stat. And uh, since I think it's when you get to, let me just check on that, yeah, when you get to level 10, players can select a prestige class, which is like a second class. Well, y you can either pick the same class that you picked initially to further specialize in that. Or you can pick a different one to diversi diversify your powers, your abilities, your skills. So this is like just for e for each class. I've also wrote down what they get if they if you pick that as a prestige class as well. So in this case, f f uh, plus twenty energy and second tier powers, biotic powers. Uh, moving on, we got the soldier. You know, higher hit dice, uh, better starting armor and uh, weapons, better vitality and stamina, but no energy whatsoever because they have no biotic powers. Also, when they level up, when they pick them as a prestige class, you can get shotgun weapons training. Uh, then you've got the engineer, smaller hit dice than the adept because they're not really as much combat focused. They're more of a support class. That's why you can get unlock first aid as a prestige. When you pick them as a prestige class, they start off with light armor like adept, but uh, like the adepts. But as opposed to the adepts, they can also get medium armor training when you uh, unlock the prestige class. We've got the Vanguard, which is pretty much my, uh, I think it's my favorite uh, class in the Mass Effect trilogy. You can also pick that from Andromeda, but obviously there's no classes, uh, so to say, there's the, the, the profiles, obviously. Um, so yeah, they've got Vitality and Stamina better than um, Engineers and Adepts, but lower than the Soldier, because they're not as much, uh, yeah, there's not as, they're not quite as tough in that aspect, I guess. But they've also got half the energy of, a, of an Adept, because they've got a mixture of uh, s combat with uh, weaponry and, and uh, biotics. You start off with light armor, but you can also unlock medium armor. St they also start off, they were one of the few classes who start off with shotgun training, but they can also unlock assault weapons training later on. Um, moving on with the Sentinel, which is basically, so since the Vanguard is like a mix of the soldier and the adept, the Sentinel is basically a mix of the, uh, the adept and the engineer. Uh, so again, 1d6, because not, not as much of a pure combat focus class. Better energy than the Vanguard, but still worse than the Adept. Also start off with poor poor amount of... Uh, poor weapons training, because they, they can only use the pistol, but they also have a shitload of, of abilities to keep their uh, squad alive and control the battlefield. 
and both others. Um, and debuff enemies, obviously. So you've got the start off with light armor training, but they can unlock medium armor later on. And finally, for the, the basic uh, classes, I guess, you've got the infiltrator, hit dice 1d8, the, basically the, the scouts, the snipers, the, the, the marksmen. Uh, again, starting off with light armor training, but they can unlock medium. Uh, starting stats, but basically the same as an adept and engineer. And I think the sentinel as well. Yeah, but no energy, because they're not biotic at all. But the only class that can... That's one of the only classes that starts off with sniper rifle uh, training. Finally, we have the... Well, not finally, but like second last is the... Sort of the, the equivalent of the D&D Barbarian, I guess. Is the, the Battlemaster, the Krogan Battlemaster. Battle master. Uh, this can only be picked by the Krogan players. Start The only class to start off with heavy armor training. Uh, they also get the best stats. Like, best basic stats. Apart from energy, of course, because Krogans can be biotics, but not... Uh, this class isn't, it's just a full-on combat one. So the best, if you get the best health point, the best stamina. Uh, and when you pick, the, pick it as a prestige class, you get, you get Krogan Rage, which I think is an ability you get in Mass Effect 3 multiplayer. I could be wrong there, but I, I think that's what I got this from. Um, so yeah, there are they are the biggest damage dealers, biggest uh, sort of the tanks as well of the, of the Mass Effect universe. Uh, but they're not very versatile, that's sort of the the downside, because they, they can only really use shotguns and assault rifles, they don't have as many abilities, special abilities, but in terms of raw damage output and uh, health, they are the best, by far. And finally, the last class, which is unique to the Geth, no one else can pick them, similar to the Battlemaster, how only the Krogan can pick this. This is something that the Geth only get. Uh, I wanted to sort of give them quite good combat capabilities to sort of balance out the diplomatic and the, the charismatic uh, penalties that they get. As, as, because if you play, play, um, if you pick the Geth, obviously you're not going to be very popular. So they've got uh, similar to the infiltrators to start off with the sniper rifles. They can also get assault ri ri uh, weapons later on. Uh, medium armor, one d10, uh, the same hit dice as the soldier. Slightly better stats than the soldier, but uh, not as quite as good as the Battle battlemaster. No biotics, obviously, because of the inorganic. And yeah, that's pretty much... Well, uh, there was one more thing. Um, they got the Tactical Cloak, which is again something that you get as a prestige class. And that's again something I think I took from the Mass Effect 3 multiplayer. When you play as a as a Geth class, one of the Geth classes gets a ta Tactical Cloak, which is basically you can get this uh, invisible camouflage that you get, uh, uh, this see-through camouflage that you get uh, as a... something like a Predator, I guess. Like a Predator from the movies. Next thing is the background, similarly to the D&D again. But I, and you'll notice that some of them, for example, the spacer, is about around half of these are, are taken from the from the first Mass Effect. Or these are, these are backgrounds that you can choose for Shepard, but it's slightly modified so they're actually applicable to all species. And uh, yeah, but the other other half uh, half I just made up myself, and obviously each uh, background gets a skill bonus as well, just a little skill bonus to one uh, one skill. So we've got the spacer, that's from Mass Effect. The diplomat, something I made up. Planetborn is a slightly modified version of Earthborn from Mass Effect. And you've got uh, the mercenary, made up one. Colonist, again from Mass Effect. Cosmonaut, that's something I made up. Or astronaut, I guess, if you're in the West, I usually roll with cosmonauts, that's just what I'm used to. Um, Soul Survivor, that's from Mass Effect. Uh, Laboratorium, or scientist, one thing uh, I think I made up. War Hero, so that's again from Mass Effect. Pilot, made up. Ruthless, from Mass Effect. And finally, the exclusive Geth background, Rogue. So basically, you're a Rogue, uh, Rogue Geth mobile platform that has. It's sort of based on a uh, Legion, how you Geth. You have more Geth programs, so you're smarter than the average Geth platform. And you get to speak and make your decisions for yourself because you basically. You had an important mission, but you don't know what it was, you don't remember, because you got captured by space pirates. They hacked you, they installed a virus, but the virus backfired. It severed your connection to the rest of the Geth, and you sort of became an individual, basically. Something like Leg Legion in Mass Effect 3, but in a different uh, way. And yeah. So that's all the backgrounds. Then I've got the alignments. The alignments, I, like I said earlier, I just ripped them straight from D&D, because they're perfect for pretty much all RPGs. You've got lawful good, neutral good, chaotic good, and the same for each other categories, and neutrals and the... Uh, evils. Uh, I do like. Uh, I think I got this from 
Wikipedia or somewhere else. <laughs> how like the, the basic uh, description of like I'm uh, kind of self-explanatory. Lawful characters are honorable and expected to state rules. Chaotic players are rebellious and individualist. The neutral position takes a balance between the extremes. The second axis of good implies altruism and respect for life, versus evil, which implies selfishness and no respect for life. Next on, I have really basic descriptions of each of the weapons, uh, classes, or sort of or, or categories. I rolled with, I think this is Mass Effect 2 categories, because this is, because in Mass Effect 3 you get heavy pistols. I didn't really do that, I just thought that they would fit in the pistol category to make keep things simpler. Uh, and I added SMGs, which I don't think they were a thing in Mass Effect 1, if I remember correctly, but I could be wrong there. So I've got pistols, smallest, most, uh, well, I'm not gonna go to explain it's just because it's self explanatory So pistols, SMGs, shotguns, assault rifles, sniper rifles. Then I did the same thing for armor, just really basic descriptions. And they've also included some images for as many species as they could. Uh, this is from Mass Effect 1, I think. Yeah. So light armor is obviously the, the lightest, uh, the the least uh, offers the least protection, but also doesn't impact your uh, movement at all, movement speed. And it can also give you bonuses to stealth, but that depends on the actual suit of armor you have. Then I've got medium armor. This slightly heavier, slightly thicker var variant of the light armor. And this is like the standard issue, one military suit, I guess. Also, usually does not impair movement, but gives no stealth bonuses. And then heavy armor, the heaviest, the hardest, uh, restricts agility, may give you, um, restricts movement as well a little bit, and may, may give you, uh, will give you penalties to stealth. Next on we have modifications and protein relics. So modifications are basically weapon mods, like weapon gun attachments, like uh, I think I did like a little list here. Yeah, there you go. Um, optical scopes, extended magazines, um, lighter stocks, suppressors, and tripods, and so on and so on. Same goes for armor. You can like uh, add additional or like armor plating or change the materi materials or whatever. Interesting thing about the Geth here, since you cannot use armor in the same way that uh, other species have. Uh, that you kind of just don a suit of armor that some other species does because they're inorganic, they're robots. So they can modify their chassis though, and they, that's what they can use armor mods for. That's the only way they can change their, their stats of their armor. Um, and the Prothean relics are sort of the, sort of like the, like the artifacts of Stalker, I guess, or or like treasures and uh, artifacts of uh, of of D and D. So they are like the sort of the rarest items you can get. Usually, like in the in the more remote areas of the galaxy and hidden, and sometimes protected by elite enemies. Similarly, they can get uh, the Geth can modify their bodies with the the, the chassis with uh, the protein technology, and you can also modify your weapons and armor if you're not Geth. Finally, I think that's for the for this uh, little guide I did is the starships. So they are um, just divided them into. I only did combat capable. Starships, because that's really the only relevant ones. I mean, you're not going to be using a fr freight uh, transport in this. So yeah, I've got frigates, cruisers, dreadnoughts, fighters, and shuttles. So the frigates, like the like the Normandy, the sort of the, the basic uh, ones you can you will use for your squad, the, uh, the exploration, the escort, scouting vessels. Then we've got the cruisers, the backbone of pretty much every fleet and navy uh, in the galaxy. Uh, they're faster than dreadnoughts, but more heavily armed than frigates. Can't really land on, on as many planets. Depends on like the gravity level. Yeah. Then you've got the Dreadnoughts, sort of basically the Star Destroyers of the Mass Effect universe, the largest, the, the, the most powerful, the toughest shields as well. Fighters, pretty much self-explanatory, the same as fighter planes, so aircraft or single pilot uh, sp uh, spacecraft in this, uh, in, this, um, in this instance. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Well, uh, the shuttles as well. Shuttles are just personal transport. Uh, yeah, like the Kodiak uh, series shuttle that you see most often in, in uh, Mass Effect. And as you can see, I've done uh, two extra pages which are empty, and that's because they are intended for the character sheet, which I've actually created. So here's an example of what it would look like. So here's a Mass Effect role-playing game. You've got the again mostly based on just D and D. So you've got the, the basics, the name, the class, and level, the basic uh, attributes, the stats, the the skills, the hit dice, the attack types, special abilities, equipment, active buffs, debuffs. Yeah, and the second page, that's where you can expand on uh, on your uh, on your backstory, on your appearance, on age, height, weight, eyes, skin, chassis, like in terms of uh, the geth, and the hair, crest, head plate, depending on your species again. 
also allies and organizations. You can also pick an image to represent yourself. And just to give you an uh, example of what this looks like when it's filled out, I've done one for Garus. So let's say that our friend Slav Slavic plays uh, as Garus, who is a level 1 infiltrator. So you've got the basic stat star of uh, infiltrator, 80, 80, uh, so 80 vitality, 80 stamina, uh, no, no energy, so no biotic classes, uh, no biotic powers. Armor class is 12, uh, speed is 10 meters, uh, basic attributes with the bonuses, alignment, um, background, character race, and so on and so on, hit dice, yeah, skills, equipment, special abilities, just messing around with those. Uh, and the second page, which gives you all the info, his uh, appearance, his backstory, and also upload an image that's something you can use as well. And the allies and organizations. You can actually, f I've actually created one of these that you can fill out, as you can see in this one, that you can fill it out. I, I was using um, MBOS character, sheet character designer or something like that. Uh, and here's the version that you can fill out. So, there you go. And you can, uh, uh, let's do uh, character called uh, Borislav. This guy is called Borislav. You can also obviously um, format it a bit better so it looks prettier. Uh, you can uh, select the class and level for uh, Yeah, you get the idea. And that's that's sort of how it works. Um, same page, second page as well. You can select an image to upload for his uh, for the face or the full body, whatever. And that's pretty much it, I think. Um, yeah, so thanks for watching. Uh, please let me know in the comments what you thought about this. I mean, like I said, this is not a full-on role-playing game, and this is just uh, something I made for a little bit of fun. Um, mostly inspired by D&D. You don't have to have any experience with tabletop RPGs to give your opinions. Just let me know in the comments what you thought about it. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and see you next time.